<clears throat> Hello. This is going to be my review on the 2025 Junior Cycle uh, Higher Level Mathematics paper. So the last video I did the Leaving Cert one, so this is me reviewing the Junior Cert one. Again, I've had a look at it, I've gleaned through some of the questions, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the paper. So again, they're sticking with roughly around 13 or 14 questions for the paper. They seem to be settling on that number. And yeah, the very first question was a fairly okay question. You know, one, one to kind of get students settled in, it was a five minute question. So should take you five minutes as per the question says. So just the combinations and percentage discount. Question two, this is all about sequences. So they give you sequences here just to fill in. It should be okay, you just kind of spot the first and second differences. And then they combine sequences of probability, which I think is fairly good. It's a fairly nice combination to include. Although, looking at this question, I would probably brute force this instead of trying to make a general consensus on how many reds there are in a certain block or whatever. So there are definitely a lot of approaches for that question. Now, question three, uh, you would have had the upper hand if you did business, because this is like a fairly typical looking, excuse me, business studies type question. Not to say that if you do business, you're going to get this and every other student isn't. It's just that if you do business, you're more than likely just going to get an upper hand in these kinds of questions. So nothing too bad. It's a lot of multiplying numbers. And then two kind of uh, follow up questions. So question four introduced a stem and leaf diagram. Now, thankfully, if you were the kind of person to keep forgetting the key, they've included the key for you. So it's just filling in the numbers. And then just talking about the comparison between these two uh, exam scores. Okay, then they asked you about the range, uh, something with, with regards to one of the exam scores, and then a change in the mean. So fairly okay uh, standard of questions question five a five minute coordinate geometry question always nice to see uh firstly just writing down two coordinates and then putting uh three more coordinates on here talking about a parallelogram and then c being the midpoint of some segment so i mean with the people that i've, I've, I've done the tutoring with a lot of them seem to be struggling with coordinate geometry for the past while but I think this is a kind of nice little reward for doing all that study of the harder ones that they give a fairly nice five minute long question to. Now, question six is where it gets a little bit odd. So constructions hasn't come up in a while, but dividing a line segment into threes is a bit of an odd one. However, they give you a hint as to how it works in the diagram below, which I think I mean, if you spotted it, then well done. Otherwise, it's just one to kind of memorize and such. Then it asks you to uh, differentiate between similarity and congruency, which I think is a fairly uh, common thing to, to want to be asked. At least that hasn't been asked already. And then some stuff with regards to similar triangles. And let's hope that Adidas doesn't sue the SEC. Okay, question seven was fairly okay. Again, just a lot of geometry and a lot of kind of critical thinking skills here. Uh, this was quite a long question, so 15 minutes recommendation. So then they ask you about sort of ratio and proportion. So talking about um, six liters per 250 square meters, and then talking about the ingredients list in fertilizer. And then two fairly standard uh, cylinder questions, firstly finding the volume, just ensuring that you convert this to meters. And then uh, fairly general sense where we have uh, the length being three times uh, length of the radius, and then you have to find uh, radius and such. So quite an involved few questions, but not anything that should really scare you. Okay, I, I think any student who had done a lot of work on the 3D shapes should be fairly confident that they did. 90% uh, or gotten full marks for at least the latter half of the question. 
It costs you an eight, a very, very simple uh, trigonometry question. So here you just have to find an angle for which the cosine of the angle is 27 degrees. And then finding the height of this little spire thing. Again, fairly standard trigonometry there. You're essentially just finding the difference in the heights here. So that was the entire question, by the way. Uh, question nine is another functions question. So just talking about uh, the functions and uh, asking you to kind of deduce between certain bits of it and then just kind of manipulating the function in general. So I think, again, it, it's a case of where if you've done the practice, it'll pay off in, in these kinds of questions. Question 10, standard Venn diagram stuff, uh, just using a lot of the, uh, the similar set notation. Now, question 11, this one students should be very okay with, but dividing a cubic by a linear term, possibly, uh, the only way I've actually done this is, well, I've, I've asked students to divide a linear into a quadratic, but actually never as far as a cubic. It should be reasonably okay. It is just following the same steps, just an extra time. Okay, question 12, they ask you to draw uh, a function, they give you a set of axes, and then solve a set of simultaneous equations. That was again the whole question, a very odd mix, but again, questions that you should be okay with by, the, by this point. And question 13, this is a very similar question to have appeared on the Tuition Center paper one, weirdly enough. Uh, it's, a, it's quite logic-based, and then there's a quadratic that you have to solve, giving you uh, a value of x from L and W. So like not, not too difficult a question, you just have to think sort of very methodically and very carefully about the question, but it, it, it's not too bad. So one of my thoughts overall, fairly decent paper. There's a lot of tricky bits in it, but that seems to be the case with a lot of the junior cycle um, maths papers that have been released. Pretty much all of them have had a bit of a sticky bit involved where you kind of stare at it for quite long and you know a lot of students will struggle with it but they'll adjust the marking scheme accordingly so i think on my patented one to ten scale i would think this falls in and around possibly a seven and a half it's definitely better than average it is a nice manageable paper to sit so well done to anyone who sat this exam today uh, you don't have to deal with uh, junior cycle maths anymore